What should everyone know about wild food foraging? Should we make wild edible weeds a part of our diet? I love wild food. Like it's one of my favorite hobbies, actually being out wild for foraging and you got to know what you're looking for. It, when I'm in Canada every day, especially in the late summer, we work all day and then work in the yard is, until right before sunset. Then we'll go swim in the local lake and then we'll pick mushrooms on the way home and then we'll go cook them up for dinner. You know, so I have a salad and, and wild mushrooms. You don't want to be doing that unless you know what you're doing with mushrooms. You got to be really careful. It's taken me years and years of studying and learning and being taught to find out which wild mushrooms are edible and which aren't. And you just have to have a real knowledge about it. If you don't know, don't try. You don't want to, you don't want to do something dangerous because there are some deadly mushrooms out there, deadly gallerinas, um, destroying angels, another one that people mistake and you just don't even want to take a chance. So that's the, that's the negative side. The positive side is there's a lot of free food out there. There's a lot of wild berries out there. There's a lot of wild blackberries. There's a lot of wild raspberries. There's a lot of wild blueberries. There's a lot of wild food. There's a lot of wild fruits. There's a lot, a lot of wild green edible things. In this ecosystem, one of the wild foods we do a lot of is a stimulant, <clears throat> Ilex vomitoria, which is the yerba mate of the north. There's a yerba mate that grows in North America. It grows all through Texas, and it, we call it yaupon. And Yaupon's a completely wild plant, totally grows wildly everywhere, all through Texas. And we dry it and or or we'll take it green and powder it. And you just put it in tea and you drink it. And it's phenomenal stimulant. I, I That's another one I really like. It's real smooth energy, probably because it comes from a leaf as opposed to a seed, right? Because coffee's coming from a seed. Even cacao is coming from a seed. It's coming from a nut. So I, it's really like a real clean energy smooth and just works for me there's so many great things out like that like that all free it's just that's so amazing there's so much food out there it's crazy like I'm, right now i'm looking out i'm seeing wild junipers so i could be out there you eat let's say we go on a hike and i will go on a hike later today i'll eat three or four or five wild juniper berries they're delicious and they're really good and you don't need much because wild food's so much more powerful it's so much more potent i lived on a bit large percentage of wild food for a long time or foraged food, even from people who had trees in their yard, I'd knock on the door and be like, Hey, you, you got like 300 lemons on this tree. And they're always just dropping to the ground. Can I just like get a hundred of them? And they'd be like, Oh, you'd take them all. And so we take them all. And we, you know, we do that in the neighborhood and just go around and just, there was so much free food. We, we are in a crisis actually of abundance, but not realizing it, not seeing it. And so that's really the great breakthrough is when you like go, oh, there's look at all this great stuff around here. It's all here. That's that's the power of wild food and wild eating. Do you recommend colonics? Are they necessary? I love colonics. I, I think they are necessary for people who are backed up if they can handle it. I really feel like it's necessary for me because – we're just in an unnatural state all the time. Like I'm sitting right now. I'll be sitting for hours. This is totally unnatural. This is not a normal thing for a human being to be doing. I, I should be out walking. I should be squatting. I should be rolling around on the ground. I should be swimming. But sitting, that's not good for your digestion. So colonics is kind of comes in and enemas come in to an unnatural situation that we're in. And I would also say this, the research on longevity indicates that it's metabolic problems and detoxification that get us in the end, meaning that our body is not 100% efficient in eliminating waste. To think so would be naive. It'd be very naive to think your body's 100% efficient. I get people who say that to me and I'm like, that's a very naive statement. Nothing's 100% efficient in nature. It's There's going to be a loss, right? There's it's, That's just probabilities. So at some point, your body goes, hey, we're a little bit backed up here. We need some help. And that's where the enemas and the colonics come in. Now, a colonic is like a glorified enema where you're going to be getting like 20 enema releases in one session instead of just one enema. And that's why I like it. So I recommend, especially for cleansing, let's say we're going to do this three-week cleanse that's coming up on Thursday. Well, guess what I'm doing on Thursday? On Thursday, I'm going to be in for a colonic. The following Thursday, a week later, I'll be in for another colonic. The following Thursday after that, I'll be in for another colonic. So I'll get three in. And then I might do enemas in between because the worst thing for fasting and cleansing is to be sitting in your own waste. 
At some point, you've got to pull the bathtub out and literally have 20 bowel movements or more to get everything out. Now, people ask me, will I lose weight? And the answer is, you bet. You're going to lose weight. 100% you're going to lose weight. You could lose five pounds in one colonic. You have a good 90-minute colonic. I had, I did a cleanse. When was this one? This was one... This was one, geez, this is back in, this is about a year ago. It was a year, exactly a year ago. And I was, I was all the way into day five of the water fast. And I went to go get a colonic and I'm in with, with Irene. She's my colonics gal. And we're, I don't know, 40 minutes into it. All of a sudden, boom, it's coming out. Everything's coming out. And I'm like, whoa, are we going to keep going? Cause normally it's over in an hour. And she's like, no, we're going to keep going until it's over. Like until you get everything out because it just kept coming out more and more and more stuff. I've been fasting on water. I I had hardly eaten anything in weeks because, see, this is your lymphatic system that goes, oh, my God, let's get rid of it. We got a chance. We got the energy. We're on top of it. Let's dump it out now. And it just all comes out at once. And it's a beautiful thing. And I felt a change in my being from that. I think it was the best colonic I've ever had, actually, strangely. Out of all the years, I probably had 100 colonics in my life easily, maybe 200. And that one was something special. I was like, whoa, that was something different happened there. We're not sick. We're toxic. We live in a toxic environment. We're in a toxic soup. We grew up in a toxic soup. So who knows what kind of toxins we've sequestered from when we were eight years old or some you know crazy cereal product or something that we ate when we were 10 and our body never metabolized it. That, that felt like one of those type of releases where there was something deep in them and my body was like, you're going to stay right there and we're getting it out now lay down (laughs) and it just came out right then so that's where colonics can be very effective 